Hey guys, this is Jessica. Welcome back to my channel, The Retro Farmhouse. Today's project, I wanted to make a cushion for my sewing chair that I have for my new sewing table. If you didn't see that video, I'll link that up above. And I got this chair at an antique shop probably, I've probably had at least six to eight months. It used to be colored blue, but I went ahead and painted that with some DIY paint in the color crinoline. And I just wanted to kind of show you guys how I made this seat cushion. If you saw one of my previous videos, I did kind of a seat cushion on that one, a little bit different of a variety. But I wanted to kind of make an easier one to show you guys in case you were interested to do this same project. So let's get into starting today's project. So this is the little chair that I was talking about that I got from the antique store. And like I said, somebody put some planks on here. It looks like some little fence pickets. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure my length and width of this chair. Now, some chairs are perfectly square and others are slanted like this one. So I'll have to end up measuring all four of my sides. I'm using this fabric that I got off of Amazon. It's a linen blend by Robert Kaufman. I absolutely love this. They have a lot of really nice linen fabrics. And I'll put that link below if anybody is interested. The first thing I want to do is just take off any of my salvage pieces and then I'm going to basically just measure this in a square first off. So I've taken my measurements and I'm just using my little cutter here to cut my square first. And this fabric is actually doubled over so both of my pieces are on this fabric. To make this a little bit easier to cut my length, I do like to fold this in half and then just cut whatever length that I need. Next, I'm going to take my scissors and just cut on my fold here so that way I'll have two separate pieces. Again, since my seat of my chair is not completely square, I'm going to fold this in half and I'm just going to make a small cut at the top. The back part of my chair is shorter than the front part, so that's the reason for the slit. And I'm just going to put this at the angle and cut that piece off. And this is going to give me that tapered look that I need for this seat cushion. And I'm just gonna repeat this same step on the other side. Next, I want to add some decorative ruffles to this. So I'm just taking my remaining fabric and I'm cutting two inch strips. Now, depending on the size of the cushion that you're making for your ruffles, I recommend that you measure all the way around and double that length. And here you see, I am then gonna take each one of my pieces and I'm going to serge those pieces together with the right sides together. Next, I'm gonna take my long strip here and I'm just gonna fold over about a quarter of an inch and I'm going to iron this down. Then I'm gonna fold over one more time, about a quarter of an inch, and I'm gonna iron this again. And this is gonna be my finished edge on my ruffle piece. Next, I'm gonna take this over to my regular sewing machine, and I'm just going to sew right on that fold line just to tack this down. Now I'm going to take it over on the raw edge side and I'm gonna create my ruffle. And to do this, you're going to want to place your sewing machine at the longest stitch length and the highest tension. You'll notice as I start sewing this that it's going to gather up into a ruffle. Thank you. 
Next, I'm just gonna line up both of my pieces here with the right sides together, and then I'm going to take my ruffle here and I'm gonna sandwich that in between. Now, I wanna leave an opening that's about four inches or so, so I'm just gonna start tacking a little bit further down than the end piece here because I wanna leave that open so that I can then turn this inside out the right way and then I'll be able to stuff it later. So I'm just gonna work it through here, matching my raw edges together and pinning this down. And the corner pieces are a little bit more trickier, but I just kind of worked with them here and pinned them the best that I could. Next, I'm gonna take this back over to my sewing machine and I'm just gonna stitch all the way around until I get to the ends of that four inch opening. And remember, I wanna leave that open here. Once I'm done with that, I'm just gonna take my scissors and I wanna go and clip the little ends off of my corners, being careful not to clip my stitch. This is just going to get rid of some of the bulk in your corners, that way when you turn it right side out, it'll have a nice finished edge there. Next, I cut two more strips that were two inches wide and about 30 inches long, and these are gonna be my little ties that I'm going to be able to tie onto my chair. So I'm just, again, gonna fold down a quarter of an inch on one side, and I'm gonna iron that, and then I'm gonna fold on the other side a quarter of an inch. Basically, I'm gonna be making what they call bias tape here, and once I'm done with folding both of my sides down, then I'm gonna fold this in half and iron it one more time. Next, I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine and I actually folded down my rough edge there and folded it to the inside. And then I'm going to stitch around the top and then all the way down to the other side. So here you can see I have a nicely finished tie that is finished on all of the edges. I went ahead and retrofitted this on to my chair just so I knew where to put my ties. But basically I have folded my tie in half and I've placed a pin in that half mark onto where I wanna place these. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stitch through here in what we call stitch in the ditch. So this is going to allow it to be secured onto here, but it won't be as noticeable. So I'm just gonna take this back over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna do a couple passes back and forth. My sewing machine has a little button on it where I can sew forward and then push the button and sew backward and do that a couple of times just to secure it. Next, I'm going to stuff my seat cushion. I like to use some of the leftover stuffing I have from old pillows, or you can even get some really cheap ones at Walmart for like two to three dollars, the ones that they use for bed pillows. I like to get the stuffing out of these and then pull it apart. By pulling it apart, this creates a less lumpiness when you're putting this inside of your pillow. And I really kind of try to work that into the corners and work it around and spread it because I don't want any lumps in my seat cushion.
Now I'm ready to close up my back part and the first thing I'm gonna do is, you've seen that I flipped this over and this is the bottom and I'm gonna take those two pieces of my ruffle here and attach those together. So I'm putting the right sides together again and I'm gonna sew down through there. Next, to close the pillow part, I wanna make sure my stuffing is in there really good and I'm just gonna fold down my edge pieces here and then I'm gonna take my ruffle and I'm going to pin that down so that it's secure in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna top stitch over this as close to the edge as I can so it's not as noticeable. And this is part of the reason why I also put this to the back because you're not really gonna notice this anyway. Now you could be finished here, but I wanna add a little bit more of a decorative item to this. So I'm taking some buttons that I have and I'm gonna create some more, I guess they're the cushion type buttons that you see in like tufted headboards and chairs. So in order to achieve this, I'm just gonna take something that's pretty round and I'm gonna create four circles here and I'm gonna cut that out with my scissors. Next, I'm gonna take my needle and thread here and I'm just gonna go over and under all the way around my circle, creating a very loose stitch. Then I'm gonna take a small amount of my stuffing here and I'm gonna curl that up into a ball as much as I can. I'm gonna place my button on top and then I'm gonna hold my finger for pressure in the middle and I'm just gonna pull on my string and this is gonna gather everything up into the middle. Once that's gathered, I like to add a few stitches to the back of this to secure it a little bit better. And then it's time to apply it onto my seat cushion. To do this, I just take my needle and thread and I'm gonna put that through, making sure that I go straight down through the cushion. You don't wanna go in an angle. And I'm just gonna stitch this back and forth. So I'm gonna try to keep my stitch length as small as possible so that it's not gonna be as noticeable. And the tighter I pull this, it's gonna give it more of that tuft look. Once I'm finished, I then just do a couple stitches in the back to secure that thread. And here's how today's project turned out. I think this adds a nice little decorative farmhouse element to my little vintage chair here. Plus it gives me some added cushion when I'm gonna be sitting at this table for long amounts of time. 
and the little ruffles I love that it's a classic look it kind of adds a little bit of a feminine touch to it as well and I just love the blue and white stripes on this Thanks again for joining me today on our project. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please hit the like button as well as consider subscribing. And as always, stay tuned for our next DIY. You guys have a great day.